Hello YouTube and especially all you photography lovers out there. I got a package in the mail today and I wanted to share the contents with you. And that is in regard to the new Paul C. Buff Alien Bees DigiBees 800 strobe unit. Now there's been some other videos already released as the units have just come out this week, um, but they've showed some unboxing, how these work as strobe units, which is awesome. I mean, after all, that's why we buy them as photographers. But I wanna to talk to you about how the DigiB falls in line between its very close sibling, the Alien Bees uh, line, it's actually a part of that series, and how it compares to the flagship Einstein unit that Paul C. Buff also offers. So I'll talk about some of the features that it inherits from both of these units and then some things that kind of allow it to stand alone so that you can evaluate if you're in the market for one of these, how it compares to strips you're already familiar with or how it will compare feature set to price unit. So let's do a comparison here. Now the Alien Bees 800 series um, have served me well for years and years and years. It wasn't until more le recently that I upsta updated to the Einstein series because of the uh, shorter flash duration for doing sports and having the remote uh, controllability through the Cyber Commander and things like that, that I really started moving up the ladder because the Alien Bees have pretty much done most of what I've needed them to do. We'll talk about a few differences in a feature set, but this won't be a really in-depth um, look at all the little power nuances and things like that. That information is available for you online. I wanna tell you how they compare for your money. So the Alien Bees 800 and the DigiBees 800 are basically when it comes to uh, flash output and um, feature set very, very similar. They're the, the most similar units available in this series with the 320 watt second power output. Um, so you have three in the full on Alien Bees B series, which is the 400, 800, and 1600 series. And then in the DigiB line, you have the 400, 800. And they compare, like I said, very similarly to their bigger brothers in the same line. There's no 1600 offering in the DigiB series yet. So I wanna talk about how these two really compare because the DigiB comes in at $70 more. So the big question is, is the $70 more uh, just because it's newer? Or is there actually something of substance in the DigiB unit that allows it to offset itself enough from the Alien Bees unit to give it some consideration? Well, let's talk about that now. So the first thing you'll notice is the design similarities between these two are dead on. Um, in fact, let me rotate them profile for you because you can really see it here. Now, obviously there's a pronounced difference in length. Let me get out of that. I shot against this white wall so you can see the differences because two of the units are black. Um, but you can see a very big similarity between these two units. The same kind of marquee design on the side, the same type of venting. They have the pinch clamp um, to release the accessories and the uh, protective coverings. They both have the same size umbrella uh, kind of shoot on the top, just a slight difference in the umbrella toggles. Now, there are a few other features up here which we'll talk about when we compare it a little bit to the Einstein. But you can see that they're very, very much in the same family. With the exception of the protrusion up front, which is houses the modeling light and the strobe unit itself, um, the units are very, very similar. In fact, this one is probably four-fifths the length of this one. And I'll show you side-by-side uh, -side pictures with all of these laid um, on their backs, if you will, so you can see how they stack up. But the core of the unit, very similar. But with the substantial uh, reduction in length up on this end, you you find a unit that's a lot easier to pack, which is one of the primary reasons I looked at this, because since moving up to the Einstein unit for a lot of the work that I do, the Alien Bees have been auxiliary units when I need more than the amount of strobes I have in the Einstein unit. Um, I can add them to that as needed. But I do a lot of my international travel with the Alien Bees. And so when I look at packing real estate, the, the difference between the two in weight is only a few ounces. I weighed them and it was very negligible. This one is a few ounces more some something like maybe two or three ounces heavier, but it's real estate. The packing size is substantially different and there's less fragile parts when I'm going to say Africa for a couple weeks and I know that these are gonna go in my checked bag, um, that there's gonna be less uh, likelihood that the unit's gonna get damaged. This just feels more dense. It feels like there's a lot more stuff crammed into a smaller space, less room for things to kind of uh, fly around and stuff. But there you go. Now, my units are kind of plain Jane. This is white and black, obviously, but one of the uh, standout features that the Alien Beast flash has, flash heads is that you get the opportunity to play, 
pick colors that kind of are your flavor. Um, they offer orange, yellow, green, pink. I think they've done blue, purple, you name it. Um, I've always gone kind of generic. Uh, when I ordered my Alien Bees early on, I wasn't sure using a, a direct um, diffuser going forward, a reflector dish or a softbox or something, wasn't too worried about it. But as far as using as a reflected source, like with a PLM umbrella type modifier, if I was getting in close to my subject with the diffusion surface, if the um, unit itself was gonna cause a color cast. So if, for example, the unit was red or orange or pink or lime green, if I would have any type of issue with the color um, kind of leaking into the frame or, or causing a color cast. I doubt that's the case, but I was playing it safe, so I went with white. The um, DigiB is not available in white, but I like black, um, easy to keep clean. So that is why I pick the Plain Jane models uh, as far as colors go, but there's a variety. Uh, several in the Alien Bees, the DigiB right now, uh, I think has four, um, really pretty blue one actually, but I decided to go with the black. So let's go on from there. Now let's take a look at the back of these because this is where they really start to stand apart and where this story inherits some of the feature set of the Einstein series. Now with the Alien Bees unit, the power adjusting, which was in six stop units, I think down to 164th power was within this slider. Okay, right here, you kind of had these indicators along the top. Um, the only thing that these two share from the back other than the shape is the, the power input and the on and off switch. The on and off switch does illuminate on the Alien B, uh, 800, the regular B series, sorry, they're both technically Alien Bs. The B series, the switch lights up. The DB series, the switch does not light up but everything else pretty much on the back of the panel does. And I'll show you that in a minute because I wanna show you something I've discovered since playing around with it today that I think is of interesting note. The buttons are coming basically over from the Einstein series, a different color, but very similar shape. Um, the units on the, uh, sorry, the buttons on the back of the DB unit are slightly more rubberized than the smoother plastic feel of those over on the Einstein, but you can see where the heritage kind of comes from there. The other thing to take note of is the top of the units. Now I mentioned before the umbrella sleeves are very similar on these with the exception of the shape of the lug nut that holds them in place. With the uh, Einstein, they have the same nut, the, whole, the same screw to hold the umbrella in place, but I do really like the full length umbrella shaft of the Einstein unit. It gives a much more surface area. It's a lot more um, advantageous if you're putting a more sizable umbrella or PLM on the unit. And when I travel internationally, again, back to why I bought this, I would prefer something a little longer. I would prefer this tube to be longer because I don't take the um, kind of the cone shaped modifiers that are specifically for Paul C. Buff heads because when I travel, I want all of my light modifiers to be as flat as possible. So I don't take the collapsible um, soft boxes from Paul C. Buff. I take the, the ones I have back from uh, PhotoFlex because they get flat, the um, ring lays flat. So flatness, small space, vertically especially, is a big deal when I'm packing for international travel. And when those longer rods that hold the umbrellas in place are secured, there's less bow and a lot more, again, surface area and restriction um, in the Einstein unit. Again, these two very similar. What these two do share are these two units. First of all is a um, kind of a surface dome for uh, light diffusion. This is for the optical slave. This unit has a flat surface in the back. Kind of a pain if you were relying on optical slaves before and you had this backed up against a dark wall and you weren't getting any reflected light back there to trigger it, um, which is what I did early on. I couldn't afford um, uh, slaves. I couldn't afford, I'm sorry, res uh, receivers for each of my units. Um, I did have an issue with that flat surface back there. Well, they've moved it up taut and top and put a 360 dome on top, which is a really big help. Um, the other thing you'll see is these both have the transceiver uh, unit modules, their receivers for the, the Cyber Commander unit, which I'll show you that in a minute. The big difference is the DigiBees adds this rubber gasket with this door on the top, which is a really cool feature. It keeps dust and debris out of there, which can get down in those small little cracks. They kind of have uh, long extensions on them like uh, CF card receiver units do. And so any type of sand or debris that would get down there would be just 
impossible to get out. And this is gonna help with dust and moisture and things like that. I did not see this before I ordered it, nor did I pay attention to it in any of the photos, but it's a very welcome feature because me traveling to Africa every year where it's basically like a softball infield, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, having these critical little holes, having some sort of protection um, when I'm moving the trans, uh, transceiver in and out is really, really cool. So basically there's how they all stack up. Um, I'll rotate all of them sideways again so you can see, and I'll show you a, a photo in the video of how they, they look standing side by side. Um, very, very cool. The other thing you're gonna get in the Einstein unit is um, this uh, micro SD card slot here on the top that is not available on the DigiBee. So before I get to the back, the last thing that I did wanna mention that isn't available when you look dead on at I'm sorry, on this one is on these, is the, the sync port. If you're using a traditional um, sync unit, um, one of the other ones provided by Policy Buff or available by Policy Buff, or a pocket wizard or whatever, and you need to plug them in um, through the traditional uh, sync port, it is on the bottom. Not a big deal, but something to take note of. Um, instead of being directly on the back, you do have to sync through the bottom. But with the... Um, the stuff that Paul C. Buff is offering with regard to the Cyber Commander, the transceiver, even the regular uh, non-Cyber Commander unit that just sends the, the signal, it's very, very advantageous to have this because of cost, power, you name it. And I'll talk about that in a second. So there is kind of how they compare and contrast. Uh, again, power output between the Alien B800 and this one, the same at the max 320 watt seconds. I think you get a slightly better T1 rating um, at max output, but it's very, very negligible and it's nowhere near in the extreme that the Einstein is available of doing. So if you're in the market for an Alien Bees 800 unit, the, the DigiB is worth considering. So, so far, the main differences, just to recap before we go on to the next phase, where I really compare these two, is, the, is as follows. You're gonna get a better optical slave um, receiver on the DigiB versus the Alien B. You also get this uh, port, which is rubberized for the transceiver unit that they offer. You're gonna get touch button um, interface. I'll show you that illuminated in a minute. And you're going to get a much smaller footprint overall. Now, the last, or what I think is kind of the coolest feature of this unit, I'm about to show you in a minute, but that is the overall setup of things that you do get on this that you don't get here. So let's take a look at some of the standout features in this back panel on the DigiB. All right, guys, so here's what the back of the unit may look like in a dark studio or some sort of dark environment. I wanna show you the easiest way to read the blue uh, readouts. Now, you're not seeing anything. This here at the top where I'm rubbing my thumb over, that is the Alien B logo that's backlit. That's right, guys, you get a backlit Alien B if you get a DigiB unit. So that may be reason alone uh, for you guys to pick one up. But you get your power indicator right here in the middle. It will show you the flash power output uh, relatively speaking. Um, it also do it for the modeling light. You have lights that'll pop on over here, like the blue light just lit up is about, um, is if the slave is activated. This right here may be hard to see on your screen, but this one that's disappearing is with my finger, is the chime for the recycle alert. That's if I just want it visual by the bulb, bulb and audible, off altogether, or just the chime. Again, that's to the alert when the recycle is completed. Um, other things that show up if you needed to adjust the channel over here on the right, it won't show up because I don't have a receiver in play, but it has a light, so does the frequency channel. You have a test button over here to the right side, and then over here on the left, you have your flash power rating and then model lamp is next to it. So this is what it looks like in very, very low light, awesome readout, really cool blue color. I'm gonna show you what it looks like with the lights on now. All right, guys, so now with the lights turned on, you can still see the Alien B right here is, is illuminated, but here is something that is a little bit different to look at. Because the LED uh, lines, it's very much like a digital bedroom radio clock, because when they're not illuminated, they're kind of a, a really pronounced white or clear, um, in certain lighting situations that I've noticed, like in my office especially, um, I have to kind of tilt this because depending on my angle or kind of where I'm standing relative to the back, the blue um, readout is actually kind of a little bit hard to see. There's not enough contrast to some degree. So as I tilt this, you can see it becomes easier or harder to read based on the angle down because it's, it's darker isn't a problem. 
but I'm trying to, to illustrate it here on the screen for you because I did notice it in my office. So if you're dead on, you're fine. You can kind of see a little bit there. Um, the digits that are not illuminated are kind of easy to see. So there's that. Not a deal breaker because for me, I typically, um, I don't rely on the power uh, rating here. I meter it and I change the power remotely or whatever. But if you are going to be using this type of display, that's something to keep in mind. The, the non-illuminated and illuminated uh, features are very close in luminosity, it seems, and it can be a little bit tricky to look at directly. So there you have the daylight look at the back of the unit. All right, guys, I'm gonna tilt this down for you now. I do like this. This has the 90 degree angle cord. I don't know if you can see that from the angle here. You can see how it comes out at an angle. Um, I do like that they're including that. The Alien Bees that I actually just ordered and only got in two days before this unit came with the traditional straight out. But I do like the 90 degree downturn. It gets the cord straight down. If you're using a battery pack like I happen to have here, a Vagabond, um, it gets the, the angle down and straight to the unit. So I do like that the Digibee comes with the angled power unit. Now on the top here, I'm going to show you this. The rubber gasket flips out of the way and reveals the receptor for the pronged transceiver unit. Now you got to be very careful with these. Um, they have to go in the, the holes obviously just right. They do hold them in place, provides power, um, frequency, everything that it needs. But the rubber gasket shifts a little bit, at least on mine. So you want to be very careful to make sure that I kind of wiggle it a little bit to make sure that the rubber opening and the holes are lined up below it before I go plugging the unit in. Um, so now you can see on the back, because the transceiver's in, I couldn't show it before, but I can hit the frequency button and the channel button and they'll light up. If you remove the uh, transceiver unit, they will not light up. It basically becomes inactive. So uh, what I was going to show you before is if you don't have this, this is one of two variations or three flavors actually. In uh, two flavors, some battery operated, some are not. This is battery operated. This is what I was using in my Alien B uh, flash unit and I can get some of the functionality with the Alien B uh, traditional B unit with this by linking this into the, the phone kind of remote slot, but it's a lot more cumbersome. You have these cables which can come loose over time, PC sync ports um, which can become loose and things on the side. I've had that happen before. Uh, plus you have to get th ways to hold these. I don't like them just dangling, so I've used this kind of Velcro on the side. If you go with this route, it's a lot less expensive. They're only they're only 30 bucks and they work um, with this unit. Now I didn't do any type of update. I just got the cyber commander this week as well, but it recognized, I don't know if this will focus in up here or not. All right, there it goes. I think it's focused now I'm trying to see on the remote screen. You can see right here, it's identified it as a DigiB 800, uh, just like it would an Einstein unit. I did not do any type of firmware update. So my cyber commander that I just got this week already had um, what it needed to recognize the um, DigiB unit. So I just basically went in, opened it on its correct channel, and boom, within two seconds it recognized it right here. Sorry, it's opposite to me. Uh, the DigiB 800 is recognized down there. So let's go back to the flash unit now and take a look at this. It functions just like another unit would. So it's on uh, flash output now, and I can raise and lower the flash output. And that's basically full. Can reduce it all the way down. Now it's Sorry, that's probably dumping. Now it's significantly lower, you can see. Um, and it tells relatively here, negative six is basically as low as it can go. Um, but now we're gonna get over to the kind of the coolest feature about this, and this is the modeling light. Now, this is a comparison between the modeling lamp and the Einstein unit, which is on this side over here, and the DigiB unit, which is on this side over here. Now, the Einstein unit comes with a quartz 250-watt modeling light, and the DigiB comes with a brand-new permanent LED, which is a 400-watt equivalent on the output. And this LED is balanced to 5600K so that you can use this basically as a hot light. So I'm gonna kinda show you how the two work there and I'm gonna do that with the uh, Cyber Commander unit, which I have back here behind the camera. So what I'm gonna do first is the Einstein. Now the Alien B uh, regular B800 series unit will take up to 150 watt um, incandescent bulb. You can use fluorescence and things like that, but again, a lot larger bulb and things. So I'm talking, comparing here the Einstein with the DigiB because the model light on the Einstein is actually pretty good. So I'm gonna go over to the Einstein unit now. 
and I'm going to remotely um, turn its modeling lamp to adjustable. And as soon as that goes over, you'll see it come up. Now this is the lowest power setting and I'm gonna go back over and select that unit and then I'm going to increase this all the way up. And as you can see it there, pretty bright on your screen. Now I've, again, I've dialed the aperture down a little bit so this won't blow out the frame. So comparison, while this is a 250 watts uh, bulb on your right, I'm gonna go over and turn the modeling light on on the Digibee unit. And you can see much bluer looking on the screen over on this side because it is that 5600K, whereas this a lot warmer balance over here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back over to the modeling light on the one on the left and I'm gonna turn this one all the way up as well. So as you can see, it gets pretty bright. All right guys, first of all, I wanna apologize for the audio. I really hope it wasn't bad in the previous clips but I just saw my H1, I ran out of memory card space, so this is being brought to you through the internal microphones on the LX100, that's the Panasonic, Panasonic, sorry, Lumix LX100. But I wanna to talk to you a little bit about this setup and give you a quick recap. The camera is color balanced right now manually to 5600 Kelvin to match, you guessed it, the LED modeling light on the DigiB 800. The aperture is about 3.5, ISO 800. I'm shooting this at uh, 24 frames per second in 4K at 1 1 50th of a second shutter speed. So that gives you an indication of what I'm dealing with here. On this side, the main and only light in this entire room is the Alien B, I'm sorry, Alien B DigiB 800 LED modeling light on full blast. Now, this is being diffused though. So it is about uh, three feet away from me and it's about the equivalent of the top of my head, and it's being diffused, single outer diffusion layer through a medium-sized Photoflex softbox. So that's the main light over here. So it is 400 watts, but it is being diffused. And then on this side, I have a white and silver bounce card filling in any shadows. It probably doesn't look awesome, but I have one light, and I'm trying to set this up by myself because everyone I work with is smart and has gone home for the weekend. So let's talk a little bit about it. This is also being powered by the Vagabond Mini Power Pack. According to the literature, it should work at full power with no strobe uh, use at all for about an hour and a half. And this has been running for about 25 minutes on full bore and it's still doing a good job. So I want to see what this looks like. I'm trying to show it to you here, but I want to test for flickering to see if there's any type of issues with video at all. But it looks pretty good on my cell phone, which I kind of used to frame this up with the app. But it's not the best output, so we'll see how it looks in post. So there is the setup for you. So basically, I was looking to see if this could be a run and gun small kind of video unit um, or a hot light, if there's enough output to do that. So I wanna go back to something I mentioned earlier and it was about the modeling light as it looked to you in camera. Now I was curious if the LED in this bulb, in this unit was a lot more, uh, was a lot brighter than the quartz bulb inside the Einstein. Again, 250 watt rated, a quartz bulb in the Einstein, 400 watt rated LED bulb in the DigiB. So basically to test that I put the two units side by side where the bulbs are about at the same exact distance to each other and from me. And what I did is one at a time using my uh, Cyber Commander, I turned one unit off and one unit on and using my Minolta 4F uh, domed light meter, I took a meter reading at the same settings for both lights and there was a two stop exact difference. So I think one, at whatever the power, uh, the rating was with the time, the setting, I was looking basically at the aperture difference. I think it was ISO 800, 130th of a second. When I metered the Einstein, uh, uh, sorry, modeling lamp at full power, it metered at four and four tenths. And then without uh, moving, I turned that unit off, turned the other one on in the Digibee, which is lighting me again here, all the way up, and it metered at eight and four tenths. So a two stop, difference in power. So even though they kind of look similar, the readings seem to be pretty much spec on. You're gonna get two stops of extra brightness. Uh, but basically, I just really wanted to see if I could use it for running gun video setup. And that's what I'm testing right now because if it's a two-in-one at only $70 more than the regular Alien Bees unit and a smaller footprint with the CyberSync transceiver port, the domed uh, slave port, the touch button back, the illuminated keypad, and um, 
I don't know. It's a, there's a lot of things to consider there. Uh, it's worth the $70 in my opinion. Um, I haven't tested extensively as a strobe unit yet. I'll be doing tons of photography in the coming weeks. I'll be mixing this in with the Einsteins. And if I have any updates about, let's do this way. If I have any problems with the unit as a flash uh, unit, as a strobe, I'll put them in the uh, description below instead of making another video because as these things become more popular, there's going to be tons of them out there. I have no doubt that it'll match the reputation of other Paul C. Buff units. So far, it's been really cool. Uh, speaking of cool, the light itself, the model light, because it's LED, even at a higher output of watts, it's not nearly as, as warm, as you can imagine, as a quartz unit. I don't have a laser thermometer, I would check it for you, but significantly cooler to the touch than the quartz or even an incandescent, the standard alien B unit. So that alone uh, gives you brighter modeling light, um, color balanced modeling light, 5600K, and you get it at a cooler physical temperature than you would other units. So that's pretty awesome. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, thanks for sticking it out. I hope you saw a couple of the variations between the three units I compared. Again, the standard B800, the AB800, which is right here, and the Einstein unit. I think so far it's a really awesome uh, buy at 350 bucks. And I'm hoping that over time um, I'll see a lot more uses for it. And I plan on adding a couple more um, uh, units to my set, to my kit to take with me when I travel internationally. Because the versatility of this modeling light with the strobe, with the smaller footprint, footprint with the Cyber Commander functionality is just going to be awesome. So I hope you find it helpful. If not, at least a cure for some boredom. Until next time, guys, as always, be safe and God bless.